Income tax 2023-2024, reporting rental income, expenses and losses, casualties and thefts. Get ready and some coffee, because to be a great tax preparer, you must be like a scarecrow, outstanding in your field, calmly and stoically staring down the crows even as they peck out your innards so they can line their cozy nests with your guts, literally. Anyway, most of this information can be found in publication 527, residential rental property, including rental of vacation homes, tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. The rental income reported on the Schedule E flows into the individual income tax formula, line one. Remember, in the first half of the individual income tax formula, it's basically a funny income statement, having income minus, instead of expenses, deductions, results in instead of net income taxable income the rental income reported on the schedule e similar to business income which is reported on the schedule c is basically an income statement format in and of itself in essence having rental income minus rental expenses which you could call rental deductions resulting in in essence net rental income which flows in from the schedule e to line one income of the formula this formula First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin fit and healthy or anything however it does seem like it worked for her just saying so you know subscribe hit the bell thing and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine if you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com, outlining the calculation on the form 1040 of which we see the first page here. The first page, the income section, the schedule E ultimately rolling into line number eight, additional income from schedule one. This is the schedule one, additional income and adjustments to income part number one, additional income, the schedule E rolling into line five, rental, real estate, royalties, and so on from the schedule E. This is the schedule E, the supplemental income and loss from rental, real estate, royalties, and so on and so forth, basically being an income statement generally broken out per property. So now we're continuing on. We're thinking about that Schedule E. We're thinking about that rental property. Possibly we have like our one property that is our home. We have a second residence possibly, but we're using it as the rental property and considering the tax consequences in, in essence, an income statement format. Now looking at the situation of casualties and thefts, Hopefully somewhat of an unusual situation, but one which could come up, so we'll touch in on it. So as a result of casualty or theft, you may have a loss related to your rental property. You may be able to deduct the loss on your income tax return. So remember, we've been thinking about losses because uh, if we have income, then the IRS is cool with that because they're like, we're your silent partner and they just take part of it. But if you have losses, they don't want to pay you for the losses and they then also are skeptical of you taking losses against other types of income, such as having passive losses that you could take against the W-2 income. Loss is something that might be more likely to happen in rental property, given the fact that you might be holding on to the rental property for more reasons than just the rental income from the active activity of renting the property, such as a hedge against inflation, and or hoping the property goes up in value just because of the location of the property. Now we have a situation where we have a loss possibly not related to normal rental activities, but related to casualties and thefts. All right, casualty. So this is the damage, destruction, or loss of property resulting from an identifiable event that is sudden, unexpected, or unusual. So that's what a casualty is. So it's 
got it, the, these criteria. It's a sudden event that happened. It was unexpected, so you can't. You had no way to plan for it, and it is not a usual type of thing to happen. Those are three key words that, of course, we can then look into defining them more fully to see if we meet those categorizations. So things that might be included include things like storm, fire, or earthquake. Theft, what is that? This is defined as the unlawful taking and removing of your money or property with the intent to deprive you of it. So obviously, I, you, theft is pretty straightforward. It used to be at one point for most people, but apparently we've lost the definition of theft uh, in many parts of the country. And we seem to have forgotten Schedule that theft, e, part like, is, one, is not to good report your normally. rental so income and expenses. It That's and basically sure the that we income statement theft. that we're going to be plugging this into is defined as the, the unlawful e. taking you and enter your income expenses and depreciation for the house the and the column for property A and enter we have your property loss rights in this country. Okay, two, people, form we have property rights. Stealing is not is not good. It's not part of our. The whole system falls apart when you take away the property rights. All right. Anyways, I don't want to get into it right now. Let's go. Gain from casualty or theft. So it is also possible to have a gain from a casualty or theft if you receive money, including insurance, that is more than your adjusted basis in the property. So obviously, if there was a theft or something like that to a piece of property which you had insurance on, and obviously, if you're in certain areas, like I'm in California over here, certain areas of the place, you know that there's going to be high theft kind of situations, you might actually want to have insurance against that because it's almost inevitable. It might not be one of those unusual circumstances in certain types of locations. You can almost have to plan for it, right? And then when the theft happens, the insurance kicks in. What if the insurance gives you more money than the value of the property that you have? Then you could actually result in a gain and that type of situation. So generally, you must report this gain. However, under certain circumstances, you may defer paying tax by choosing to postpone reporting the gain. So to do this, you must generally buy replacement property within two years after the close of the first tax year in which any part of your gain is realized. Now, if we're talking about depreciable type of property, we have an interesting added wrinkle to the situation. So let's say uh, there, there was a, a casualty or theft that, that happened. Our property was stolen or burned down or something like that. But it was on the books as rental property. And therefore, we've been taking some of that accumulation of tax potential benefit in the form of depreciation, which reduces the basis of the property. So if the property is reduced, it's more likely then that we're going to get insurance that will help us possibly to replace the property. In other words, the insurance might not simply be based on the basis of the property, the adjusted cost of the property, but on the replacement cost or fair market value, which could be likely to be higher than the property. But if my property has has a fair market value or cost originally 100,000, and now I have a tax basis of only 20,000 because I've depreciated it, then I can't replace the property with just 20,000. I'm going to need to get the replacement possibly of the 100,000 so that I have enough money to buy a replacement of, of the property. See, and then you have a gain. But if you're going to basically put that money back into a replacement property, then, then you might be able to do that, right? So in certain circumstances, the replacement period can be greater than two years. See publication period in publication 547 for more information. So the cost of the replacement property must be equal to or more than the net insurance or other payments you received. Okay, so more information. For information on business and non-business casualty and theft losses, you can see publication 547. So obviously this gets a little bit complicated and you wanna make sure that you get your basis calculations and gain or loss calculations correct if you're in the event, which hopefully is unusual of a casualty or theft uh, situation, in which case you might have to deal with it. You deal with it kind of thinking of it almost like there was a sale that took place, right? And then you've got the insurance proceeds and then you've got this idea of, do I have to report a gain from the insurance proceeds or am I gonna be buying basically a replacement property and then if I do that, what's going to be the basis of, you know, the replacement property? 
So how to report. So if you had a casualty or theft that involved property used in your rental activity, figure the net gain or loss uh, in section B of form 4684 casualty and thefts. Follow the instructions for form 4684 uh, for where to carry your net gain or loss. Example, let's take a look at a practical example if we may. In February 2018, you bought a rental house for $135,000. The house was $120,000 and land $15,000. Remembering that we have to break those two things out because the house is depreciable. The land is not, so it's on our depreciation books as two separate things. The $120,000 will be depreciated over time. The $15,000 for the land will not and immediately began renting it. So it's rental property, not personal property. Therefore, we're going to get the depreciation. In 2023, you rented it at 12 months for a monthly rental fee of $1,125. In addition to your rental income of $13,500, you have the following expenses. Mortgage interest, $8,000. Fire insurance, $250. Miscellaneous repairs, $400. Real estate taxes imposed and paid, $500. Maintenance, $200. You depreciate the residential rental property under Maker's GDS. That's the standard depreciation method, straight line uh, type of method. Uh, this means using the straight line over a recovery period of 27.5 years. So use table 2-2D to find your depreciation percent. Because you placed the property in service in February 2018, you continue to use that row of table 2-2D for year 6. The rate is 3.636%. So we have the straight line method. You figure your net rental income or loss for the house as follows. So you got the total rental income, 13500 You've got the mortgage interest. So you probably got a 1098 for that. You're not reporting it on the Schedule A because this is rental property. You're reporting it on the Schedule E, remembering that if you're doing your bookkeeping correctly, you should be breaking out your payments to the loan between interest and principal or possibly you do an adjusting entry at the end of the year to tie out your mortgage interest to what's on the 1098 and properly record the proper loan amount at that point in time. That is something that you might do a double check at at the end of the year to make sure that your mortgage interest, of course, ties out to the 1098 you will typically get from the bank. Fire insurance, miscellaneous repairs, these are things that typically from a bookkeeping side of things are pretty straightforward to record because you're probably going to record them for the most part as cash is being paid. So uh, real estate taxes and maintenance. So total expenses, $9,340. The balance is $4,150 uh, minus depreciation. So this is the depreciation, which will typically be calculated not on the bookkeeping side, but now on the Schedule tax e, part side, one, possibly to report your rental income and expenses. That's that you would basically do the income the statement the that we're going to be plugging into the, tax the Schedule E. You, do the you enter your income Notice expenses and depreciation for the house usually a and the column for a property A and enter your loss on line 22 from a gain form four into a net loss of the $213. Now the question is, what do I do with that loss? The IRS being, I'm not saying, I'm not going to pay you for the losses, says the IRS. Can I take the loss against other income, possibly? Or is it passive income that I have to then carry forward, hoping that I have passive income later that I can net this loss against, for example? So you had net loss for the year because you actively participated in your passive rental real estate activity and your loss was less than 25000 You can deduct the loss on your return. So we're saying we have a loss. We're not a real estate professional, so we don't get it from that reason. It's a passive activity, but because I actively participated in it, I get to that special 25000 amount also allowing me to get that amount because my income is not above the threshold, which would allow, which would, re, would cause me to lose the ability to take the up to 25,000 in losses. So you also meet all the requirements for not having to file form 8582. That's nice. You use Schedule E Part 1 
to report your rental income and expenses. That's basically the income statement that we're going to be plugging into the Schedule E. You enter your income expenses and depreciation for the house in the column for property A and enter your loss on line 22. Form 4562 isn't required. 